Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and I just made a terrible financial decision. But before we get into my horrible financial decision, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so you guys have seen the title, you guys have seen the thumbnail. This right here is the new car. So yes, I do in fact now own two Mustangs, AKA two crowd killers. And yes, that will answer the other question of, did I sell a GT500? No, I am keeping the GT500 and we are adding yet another Mustang. So for those of you that are not versed in Mustangs, these, although are both Mustangs are completely different, this is the GT500 and this is the GT350. And other than, you know, being different colors, they just, like I said, completely different cars. This one has a supercharged 5.2 liter V8 and a seven speed dual clutch automatic. Whereas this one has a naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V8 and a six speed manual transmission. And so like the driving dynamics with these cars could not be more different. I'll have a comparison in the future Future, but we got Mr. John Jenks here that we got to go take to his car and we also have to pay for part of the car I'll kind of explain that in a little bit later, but uh, we'll pull it out by the way getting into the GT350 is not exactly the easiest process Obviously, this is a two-door car so it has like longer doors and so I have to like be very careful to not hit the Jeep I'm not actually worried about the Jeep because I would just hit the rock rail I'm worried about this car because I would hit the uh, nice paint if I hit the Jeep, but anyways Oh, actually I'll flip this over here so you guys can see the other way and uh, if you don't know about the GT350, 8,250 RPMs. Also, this is not mine. This is John Jenks, but it's beeping like crazy. I don't know why it's in here. Anyways, as I was saying, that's the red line of this car. Whereas that car red lines, I think at like 7,000 something RPMs, roughly. So I just realized that because I haven't owned a manual car in such a long time, I do not have the skill set associated with driving manual and filming. So <laughs> this video is gonna be a little bit uh, different, but I guess once we get to the Ford store, I will uh, talk to you guys about everything. But also this car tracks all over the place. That's just what the GT350 does. And so that's another reason why it's hard to film is because like the wheels are constantly, see look, I just like go for one second and I was already almost like, <laughs> almost starting to veer in the other lane. So uh, yeah. Okay, so I just figured out a cheat code for you guys. I put on the uh, GoPro, so now I have both hands. <laughs> well, it's good we know that, so uh, we don't uh, go all the way to 8,000 RPMs. But we can still we can still get pretty high up in the rev range. Just listen to that engine. This is why you buy a GT350. <laughs> it's so crazy. This honestly feels so good and the red line again being so high like you can just keep going and going and going and it just does not end and the sound is so good now the one downside about the regular 350 over the R is that it doesn't have the resonator delete that the R has so this is a little bit quieter but some of you might see that as an upside because it makes it more daily drivable which I think um I might also see as an upside okay. as well. I don't know what you're talking about. We're going with the flow of traffic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys don't know about the GT350, then uh, you've been living under a rock. So we're here at the Larry H. Miller Ford Lincoln in Provo where I purchased the car from. Now the car actually did not get traded in here. It got traded in at the Dodge store next door. The person that traded in this car bought a new Jeep. Um, but regardless, I wanna show you guys a couple of things on the car and then we'll kind of go over why I decided to purchase this one. So other than being bright green, this is a regular GT350, which I was on the fence between getting a regular 350 and an R. And the reason I went with the regular 350 is because it's gonna be a little bit more daily drivable compared to the R version with the carbon fiber wheels and all that. And I already have the track pack 500. So it's like, I already have a crazy undaily drivable car. So like this makes sense. Um, but you guys can see super bright color on the outside. And being a pre-owned car, it's obviously not uh, perfect. There are a couple things that I will be getting fixed in the car. Um, so paint correction, there's a little chip right here. And then I think there's another one, yeah, right here, as you can see. And then <laughs> this happened driving over here that we're gonna get figured out right now. I don't know if it's gonna pop up on camera very well. You guys can see we picked up a nail, so. Yeah, we're already, we're already damaging the car. That, that wasn't there when I took uh, delivery, so that happened on the drive uh, over here. Um, but other than that, I mean, the car on the outside, like two little rock chips, uh, it's pretty much perfect. 
And then inside, you guys can see this actually has the gray Alcantara, which I've never seen before on a GT350. And I really like the contrast between the gray and the green. I don't know if it's going to pop up very well on camera, but I think it actually looks really cool. Um, this does have the Recaro seats, which is my preference, even though they're manual. I just think that they look a lot better. And again, it kind of makes the car feel a little bit more special. And then for those of you wondering, I'll start her up quickly. We've got 4,800 miles on the odometer with the car. So, you know, it's not like brand, brand new, but I mean, that's super, the super low mileage for a car, frankly. And I mean, like the rest of the interior, frankly, like 4,800 miles. So it's, it's basically like brand new with all of the uh, condition, and everything. And of course we got our GT350 chassis number right there. So I just checked the tire pressure for fun. The tire that has the nail in it is not lower at all with pressure. So the nail is holding the air in currently. Whereas there's a tire that doesn't have anything in it and that one has lower pressure. This is this is a this is a tire tragedy right now. Okay, so let's quickly talk about why I purchased this GT350 when I already have a GT500, right? So again, completely different cars. Like they drive so different, even though they're both Mustangs, like the driving experience is substantially different. So that that's part of it. The other part of it is like this is a dream car for me. I absolutely love this car so much. I actually owned one in 2017 back in the day. And ever since I sold it, I've missed it. And the reason I sold it back in the day is I just couldn't afford it anymore. I had a sales month that was absolutely horrible. And after I paid all my bills and everything, I only saved up $500 that month, which I know some people be, would be like, oh, that's great. You saved up money at the end of the month. But like I was living in my mom's basement. And so the fact that I only saved up $500 after paying all my bills, living in my mom's basement, I was like, this is not going to work. Like I need to cut down on my spending and all that kind of stuff. So I sold the GT500. I had a Ram Rebel at the time. Also, I sold that as well. Bought another truck, basically downsized my car payments and everything, downsized my, downsized my bills overall. And again, it was really heartbreaking, but it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I got to work hard for the next few years so that I could buy another one in the future and be able to enjoy the car again. And well, here we are. And I will say owning this one so far has been way more exciting than the first GT350 that I owned because first off, it's in a color that I actually like. The first GT350 that I purchased was red with white stripes. And the only reason I bought it is because it was such a good deal. Like I love the car, but I didn't love the spec on that car. Whereas I absolutely love the spec on this car. I know some people are gonna be like, Ben, it's super bright, but like you guys know I love bright colors. And then the other part of it is I am a much better driver today than what I was when I had my first GT350. Like a big thing that has like improved my driving skill is all the off-roading that I've done. And so now I can like really enjoy the car for the performance that it actually has. And so I'd say that, you know, my ownership experience now is just going to be a lot better. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about the new GT350. And let me know what content you guys want to see on the GT350 and obviously the GT500 as well, other than me getting the nail taken out of the tire. Let's actually, let's go to this back tire and see if there's anything in it. If that's why it's got, doesn't look like it. There's... I mean, obviously you can't see the bottom part, but it looks like it's uh, completely fine. So I don't, I don't know what's happening there, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about the spec on the car. Let me know if you think that I made a mistake by not getting the R. I don't think so because again, if I want a crazy track Mustang, I just will drive the GT 500. Okay, so quick update on the whole Mustang situation. Uh, we got the tire situation fixed. So you guys can see we are all good with the pressure and everything. Um, I actually took the car into the BMW of Pleasant Grove. So shout out to Brendan at BMW and the BMW of Pleasant Grove. I was going there to film my reviews for the day and I was like, hey, I happen to have a nail in my tire and I'm filming reviews over there anyways. Can you guys help me out? And they helped me out. So I really appreciate that. Uh, so again, shout out to them. But I guess that we should get into capping things off for today's video. Well, I went to the store and got some uh, berries. So the GT350 is officially a grocery getter. But anyways, to sum things up with today's video, I yes, I did purchase a Shelby GT350. Yes, I own two Mustangs now. And frankly, I own the two coolest Mustangs. I know some people say that the new Dark Horse, that's the coolest Mustang, but like, these cars just have such special powertrains. Even if the Dark Horse handles better than this car, even if it has faster track times, I don't care because this thing has a red line of 8,250 and yeah, you just can't, you can't do that with a 5.0. Um, but regardless, I'm super excited to own this car. I will obviously post, you know, content updates. So again, let me know what you guys want to see on this car. But yeah, it's, it's just cool that I've finally been able to come full circle. I've been able to make it work financially where I can, again, own this car. And this time, <laughs> own it for more than like, I think it was only six. I can't remember how long I owned the other car for. I think it was like six to, no, it was more than that. It was like a year. I think I had the other GT350 for a year. Let's own this one for more 
than a year. Let's have a lot more fun with this one uh, than the previous one. But let me know what you guys think about the new GT350. Are you about it? Do you like the color? Do you like the car? Or do you think I should have waited for the Dark Horse? I'm interested to hear if you guys think that it would have been better for me to go for the Dark Horse. My opinion is obviously no, because like, again, if you look at the values on these, these are still selling for big money. Like, a lot of these are still selling for way over original MSRP. Again, it depends on the year the mileage, all that kind of stuff. But like, if you look at a Mustang Mach 1 or a loaded up Mustang GT, those cars are selling for well under original MSRP. Again, like if you look at like a GT premium that's a 2020 like what this car is, that car is well under original MSRP in terms of the sell, uh, the sell price. So I feel like the market shows like how much more special this is as a Mustang compared to the other ones. But anyways, I'll see you.